We're playing the gun. <laughs> We're playing some more Spy Nilf Guard, except this time, uh, this is actually the game before I switched to Emir. I was playing John Covey, which I said before. I didn't actually find the result I was looking for, but anyway. This is before that. So we're playing this. We're playing up, up against uh, Kark and Crate. They're playing, uh, what was their deck? They're playing a typical strength boosting deck, boost uh, base strength boosting deck. Basically, it's a lot of not necessarily um, flexible plays, but a lot of hard hitting plays. You know, they play this card, they play Django Fett, they play uh, lots of revives, they get those cards back that they played in earlier rounds. It's a pretty Difficult deck to beat, and he starts right off with going Jago Fett. Like, look at that. Look at that tempo. On his only second play, he's at 31 strength, and I'm only at 6. It's huge. It's phenomenal. It's really difficult to beat. Now, of course, you don't, you don't want to panic. You want to just try and fight this out. Also, it really helps that I win second. Now, I am ever-threatening... A meno destroy on this, which is going to be eight plus four plus sixteen, so that's a uh, twenty-eight point strength swing. Uh, strength swing. It's it's pretty crazy. Now to combat hit the spy, I want this round to go as long as possible because I absolutely want to take it without actually having to overplay because they can absolutely go two cards down and be perfectly fine because he has this Django Fett that he can just revive for sixteen strength or eighteen strength, whatever it is, uh, on round three with just a single card. So I want to play this out. Keep in mind, like the key of this deck revolves around Django Fett. I'm hoping I'm saying that name right. I'm not getting it mixed up with the Star Wars character. But basically, it revolves around using Sigury Fett to get this card back. So I need to be really, really careful to not give up these rounds too easily, even if it seems like that would be the easy thing to do. Or that'd be the more cognizant thing to do, the more predicted or... Um, Comfortable, comfortable, that's what I'm looking for. The more comfortable thing to do. So I'm going to play out Rainfar and I'm going to pull out my own spy. This is a relatively unusual way to use Rainfar and to bring out Cantarella, but I still like it. Not only do I pull the, I thin out the spy out of my deck so I don't pull into later rounds, I also elongate this round as long as possible. Because keep in mind, Spy's Nilf Guard has pretty good tempo control. So as long as I stay in this round and control it, um, I can... That allows me to control his rounds two and three in the ways that I want, which I believe is the only way I win this game. So he hits me with a pretty he hits me with a pretty big weather. This is exactly why I like to play clear skies because I can deal with gold weather, and you know at the very least I still have a bronze draw card. Uh, so he hits me with this weather. This is really really bad. I'm going to be hemorrhaging six six points of turns. Uh, I should have actually predicted that based on the way he placed the spy on the Cedro. I just, I didn't expect to see a gold weather in a strength boosting deck like this. So he wants to try and bleed me out and make up for his relatively low flexible and low strength plays while he kind of sets up for rounds two and three. So he plays out this drought. He tries to get, he wants me to pass early. He wants me to pass right now because notice I am six seven eight points down now and then I'm just going to be hemorrhaging six points a turn going forward. He wants me to quit. I'm not going to do that. I need to keep playing this round out. I need to get the tempo in my control. I need to get this match in my control or else I will lose because he'll manipulate the match in such a way that, again, allows him to go into round three with one card and revive this, like, 20-point uh, strength play. I deal with this. I get rid of this immediately. I'm kind of hoping... I'm thinking if he plays Sigdrifa immediately, then I just pass because then he loses a key, uh, a key part of his win condition. Or it's not a key part. It is the part of his win condition. So I let him do that. I keep playing. He plays... Um, I wasn't really sure what that was. I think that's a new card, if I recall correctly. But So he plays that out. I'm still trying to wrestle... Card of, that actually kind of hurt him a little bit because he doesn't want to do that. He wants me to... He should have played his own like um like raging berserker or something, and then he plays no he he should have played his own he should have developed his own board and try and, instead of trying to damage my own because my board is going to be damaged anyway, and that just puts more pressure on me to pass early as opposed to later. But since he he damaged my units a little bit more, uh, particularly the melee and the siege, that just made the drought less effective over time. So I think that was a bit of a mistake there. It seems counterintuitive with the drought, but. 
I'm trying. I'm kind of thinking Peter. Like again, like I mentioned in the previous uh, Spy Nelf Guard, I'm not really sold on Peter being in this deck. And it's for reasons exactly like this, um, or not necessarily reasons exactly like this, but in general, I just feel like I have to cater to Peter's inflexibility. I guess. I mean, he's a flexible card, but he's not flexible in the sense that he's worth taking a silver sp a silver slot for. So I'm kind of thinking about it. I'm thinking, but I think I believe I decide on no, because if I do that, it's just going to get hit by drought and I don't want anything else getting hit by drought right now. So I put it back in my hand. I was kind of thinking of playing it on my seed spy right here and bring back up to 10 HP, but or 10 strength, but it's not really an effective way to play. So instead I go with the impair enforcer. How did I forget that name in the last game? <laughs> That's like the the card I play most commonly, aside from like emissary. So he's still he's using his harpoons to try and get my units to go to the melee row and take more damage from drought. I'm kind of thinking of using Peter. I decide not against it. He goes for John Cuff Eight because I want a, uh, a tempo. I need to catch up in tempo. I guess I go with infiltrator here. Yeah, I go with infiltrator. I toggle the raging bear. Although it doesn't really matter. I could have toggled the the harpoon and then go for the Nos brigade, which probably would have been better. But the whole point is I'm just trying to drag this round out as long as I can. I know he doesn't have a lot of good tempo options, so I'm just trying to punish him as much as possible. Or I'm trying to whittle down the cards as much as possible so that hopefully I can try and turn uh, turn the match, win the first round, uh, drag out round two as long as possible to get him to use Sigdrifa, and then go into round three and just basically go for the toss-up. Because like I've, um, I've more or less... Like, giving myself up to losing this entire game because I don't have an answer for his drought. That's like, that's how powerful uh, Gold Weathers can be. It's, like, it's kind of like the problem I have with Gold Weathers. It's like a very goldfish card. Like, you either have the answer or you don't. Now, it's greatly alleviated by, uh, you know, mobile units and weather, single row weather clears and pass on the round. But so that kind of balances itself out. But in, the, in this kind of situation where I don't have those options, I more or less just have to play it out and hope for the best or give up the round and then just lose anyway. So this is a playing to win situation instead of playing to lose. So I'm going to drive this round out just a tiny bit more while I pull out my Nazica. No, it's not Nazica. It's Impera Brigade. Get out the four uh, spy synergy and then maybe play my second one as necessary. And then he plays Ignite or Igni rather. And I'm just done. I have to pass by this point. I believe I've effectively bled him uh, would have done this round out enough to more effectively place the rest of the round in my favor as opposed to being so overwhelmingly in his favor, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> I'm trying to give myself enough room to counter the strength that he's going to be pulling out without being... I'm not explaining this very well. I believe I explained it well earlier. His goal is to his goal should have been to um, and this was a little bit of a let on by him passing instead of trying to draw me out as much as possible. Because his plays, my tempo advantage, my tempo manipulation is going to be a lot better than his. So I'm thinking he should have actually played. No, no, but that's counterintuitive. If I'm thinking what his strategy is, it's to pull out Sigdriva, pull out uh, Jingo Fret and the very last play with the very last card, right? And in doing so, you would want to play out these cards as much as possible and draw out my cards because my one draw is going to be significantly less good than his one draw. So that kind of let me on that he doesn't actually have it, which I think is what happened here. So instead of being tugged along by my good tempo manipulation, he instead wants to rely on his strategy that he wants to try and carry out. Uh, my second idea was maybe that he had a second gold weather, which would have been really bad. And that's a big reason why you want to control round two, why you want to rent, why you want to win round one and control round two is so you can draw out cards like that. So I start out with a uh, Nazi uh, Impera Brigade. All I'm doing is just playing my less flexible options. I don't believe he can really punish me all too hard by playing that card. So I double up with. I'm still a little bit afraid of multiple weathers, so I go ahead and play my Enforcer on the melee row as well. Uh, something something will be getting hit on that melee row, so I might as well um, kind of 
something will always be getting hit on that melee row. So I want to try and uh, funnel the possible damage onto my brigade instead of spread out across all of my units. So he does that. He tries to separate me. I'm still kind of afraid to go to weather because he did that. Uh, but I guess more specifically, he wanted to try and whittle down the Empire Brigade. I mean, Enforcer, rather. Play out my spy. Play out my spy. Play out my spy. <laughs> That's the Oh, man, I love Kalak so much. Kalak is such a great card. Kalak al allowed all this to happen. I play out more spies, just spies on spies on spies. Oh, I actually go for the bear because I don't recall, but I guess I didn't have any more... I, th I think I had a Nazica Brigade left in my deck, but I wanted to go with the Baron's Head because I thought that was higher value. Also, I'm taking a possible revive away from him. Although I don't know exactly how effective that is. So I'm not killing any of the spies just in case I, I don't know, <laughs> play a Nazica Brigade or something. Or not a Brigade. I don't know why I keep mixing that up. Nazica Brigade. No, wait. Impera Brigade, that's what it's called. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Uh, that actually might have been a big reason why I didn't actually pull my Nazgul Brigade. is because I wanted to pull with Brain Farn on the Renew. I'm not sure if I went into that thinking that's what I wanted to do. But in hindsight, that makes complete sense. Unfortunately, he does play that. This is a situation where I could have played my Nazgul Brigade or Royal Decree first. And then I can uh, avoid the Quarrel entirely. I wasn't particularly familiar with... Um, like, again, I'm not... I haven't played in a while, so I'm not really familiar with the, the tactics within Skellige. But that is a, definitely a card I should have watched out for and played out my rain farm at the very end instead of earlier where he could take advantage of it. That was a big mistake on my part. Also, I legitimately wasn't expecting Coral in this like this um, base strength buffing Skellige deck. But Coral is such a good card that I guess you take it in that deck anyway, regardless. It's kind of a, this is a new card, but he kind of didn't have any option to play it. Uh, hey, may battle maiden deploy a machine or shoulder ally and play a copy from your deck. It's really, really cool. And then damage the chosen ally by one. I really enjoy this card because it's like a reaver scout, except better, but more attuned to Skellige. It's really cool. And it really promotes a self buffing kind of style. So I bring out Menno because rain is not going to pull anything. I don't think even if I don't have a spine target, I still go for the four damage on Coral. And then again, like I said, oh, I guess he did have Sigrifa. Maybe he just didn't have it on the previous turn. Who knows? Or maybe he wanted to get now. I don't know. I I have to believe that he didn't have Sigrifa on round two, and he didn't want to try and draw out that round if he wasn't sure that he had that card. That at least that's the way I perceive it. So he plays as Django Fret. That's a twenty-four strength swing, and the weather ticks down for two, and I win by a single point. Oh boy, that was close. That was really, really close. You know what? It actually might not have mattered if I played um, Rain Farn when I did or later. The higher EV you play is to play it later. That's that's what I should have done. I played it. I should have played it later, even if I wasn't going to get punished because it's higher EV. That's less likely to be punished if I play it later, as opposed to earlier. But that was super, super, super close. Again, like a lot of the mistakes I made, maybe some mistakes that he made, but a really interesting game, I think. And it kind of goes into the the idea of playing around Django Fret as much as you can. Let me see what, if that's actually the right name. Jang Fret. I was close. What did I call it? Django, Django Fett? <laughs> Jang Fret. Okay. Yes. So keep in mind when you're playing up against this deck, it's a big combo you have to wait and you have to watch out for at the very, very end. They're trying they're gonna conk you over the head with. Really incredible. I also really like the drought play in that deck. Uh, I don't think it's traditionally powerful in a lot of situations, but he used it in such a way that allowed him to shore up the weaknesses of uh, the cards that he's playing in such a way that allows him to basically uh win with his win condition more often than not. The only thing I would kind of be afraid of is I don't feel like he had enough deck thinning. Like ending the, at the very end of the game with eight cards deck left in your deck with a very key win condition, uh, ca uh, counting on two cards or three even, seems a little bit uh, scary. <laughs> like keep in mind, I only have one card left in my deck and I still just barely won. I played seven more cards than he did. 
and I just barely won. Crazy. That's how much like power this deck. And he he even had a dead card. Yeah, he definitely made some mistakes uh, early in the game and sometimes maybe a little bit in the mid game, but still really really powerful. And that's that deck. Thanks for watching.